Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I just want to give you guys eight uh, recommendations within the Criterion Collection to maybe check out during this Barnes & Noble 50% off sale. Hey guys, welcome back. Like I said, I just want to um, share with you guys a few titles of um, things that I would recommend checking out during this 50% off Barnes & Noble Criterion sale. Uh, we are like nearing the end of the sale. Uh, as I'm filming this, it is the 18th of July. And so I believe it ends in about 10 days uh, from me filming this. But um, you know, there's still a little bit of time to uh, to pick some things up. And so I just wanted to go over a few of these. Uh, you know, if you are able to to maybe, you know, check them out if they sound interesting. Uh, but these are some titles that I personally really enjoy. Um, and I know I did a video uh, like a couple weeks ago right now, I think, of um, giving some like recommendations. I think there was eight in that video as well. And so uh, if you haven't checked out that video, I'd highly recommend uh, going over and checking that one out too. But I figured I'd do this again uh, just because you guys seem to really enjoy that video. And so um, I'll do just another eight titles. So I'm just going to jump right into these. Um, these are all films that, similar with the last video, these are all films that I have uh, seen and I really do enjoy and I feel like uh, you know maybe not that many people talk about these uh, a lot of people talk about certain titles within the Criterion collection uh, a lot of the 4ks get talked about a lot which is understandable because the 4ks look fantastic but uh, these are all titles that you know people might skip over people uh, unless if you're watching like trying to watch all of the Criterion films you might not you know think to grab these and so um, yeah I'm just going to kind of jump into these uh, the first one though uh, this is one that it has a Blu-ray release. It actually got a Blu-ray upgrade. I believe it was last year or the year before, uh, but this was out of print for the longest time. And this is spine number 45, and that is a film, uh, Taste of Cherry. But this film was actually pretty interesting. It is from 1997. It's 95 minutes uh, in color and in Ferris, which is, I believe, from... It's, it's the uh, language spoken in Iran. I could be completely mistaken in that, and I do apologize if I uh, misread that. But... Um, yeah, this is a, a film from, from Iran, and uh, I feel like there's not a ton of Iranian films within the Criterion Collection, but this is a a beautiful but tragic film. Uh, it is really just a about a guy driving around trying to find somebody to help him with a problem. Uh, I'll leave it at that for, for now so I don't spoil anything, because... Um, this is a, a, a film about, you know someone really dealing with some really like heavy stuff and just um it is so beautifully shot um in like a lot of it takes place of this guy just driving around and it is so uh fascinating and i really really enjoy this film i really need to upgrade to the uh, to the blu-ray uh but yeah i would uh, highly recommend checking this out um if you get a chance uh and if it does sound you know my my terrible description of the film if that does sound interesting i'd highly recommend going on to criterion's website and uh maybe watching the trailer or looking at some of the uh screenshots that they have uh, or just reading the description because this is a, a beautiful film that's honestly I one of these sales I need to pick up the uh, the blu-ray for but yeah that is the film Taste of Cherry the next one that I would recommend uh, this is spine number 68 and I feel like people probably know of this movie but don't like I feel like I don't hear a lot of people talking about it uh, and that is the film Orpheus uh, this is from 1950, it's 95 minutes, and in black and white, and in French. Uh, this is definitely a, um, like an art house film. It is definitely artsy, uh, surreal, um, avant-garde. It's very, like, uh, dreamlike, and which I really, really love that about this film. I feel like it is, like, you're watching a dream, uh, and I find it very fascinating, and so, you know, there's, there's parts of this film, it's probably not for everyone, but there are parts of this film that, um, 
you know, feel very, like, they don't make sense. Logic is completely out the window. It's, you know, people are walking on the ceiling or, like, stuff like that. It's very, very fascinating. But I would highly, highly recommend uh, just checking this out. Uh, this is technically part of a trilogy that is also released by the Criterion Collection. However, this trilogy is out of print. They did put out the uh, the single Blu-ray of this. Uh, but the trilogy that, um, that is, that is the, uh, the Orphic trilogy. And this has uh, three films in here, The Blood of a Poet, Orpheus, and Testament of Orpheus. And um, all three films are very, very similar in the sense of they're all surreal, very um, like dreamlike. And so uh, if you get the chance, I would highly recommend getting this series. Uh, again, this is out of print, uh, so you would have to find this elsewhere from then Barnes & Noble. But if that all does sound interesting to you, uh, maybe I would recommend starting with the film Orpheus. The next film I'm going to recommend, um, this is definitely not an easy movie to watch. Uh, this is a movie that I honestly, um, it is only 32 minutes long, but I spent pretty much that entire time in tears because it is a, a hard watch, um, but it is a very important film, I think, to, to experience. And um, it's a hard movie to recommend because of its uh, content. Uh, this is spy number 197. Um, it's, again, like 32 minutes long. It's uh, from 1955. Uh, it's in color and black and white and in uh, French with English subtitles. And that is the film Night and Fog. Uh, so this is a... A film that I've only watched one time, and I don't know if I'll watch it again. Um, but I will recommend it to people because I think it's a very, very important movie to uh, experience at least once in your lifetime. Um, it has a lot to do with, or it, the the content of the film deals with um, concentration camps, and it uses a lot of uh, documentary footage within the film, um, mixed in with kind of like a um, like a camera crew going back to some of these locations, you know, years after the fact, and you know, showing the same locations. Um, you know, all overgrown with weeds and stuff and, um, you know, mixed in with real documentary footage of these camps. And it is a, a tragic film. And I, um, I think it's a very, very important movie to watch uh, because it is uh, heartbreaking, but it is also a film just to... Um, you know, not dwell on the past necessarily, but to learn from the past and, um, you know, kind of uh, learn how not to repeat things like this again as, you know, humans. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, again, it's a, such a strong, um, powerful film, uh, only at 32 minutes. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly how to put it into words on, like how to recommend this movie, but it is um, one of those films that I feel like if you love movies and if you love Criterion films, especially, um, you know, this is definitely one to um, to check out uh, at least one time in your lifetime. But that is a film, Night and Fog. The next film that I wanted to talk about, um, it's definitely a little bit more lighthearted than the previous film, um, but this is spy number 287. It's technically a documentary, and that is the film Burden of Dreams. I believe I've talked about this on this channel before, but it's from 1982. It's 95 minutes long. It's in English, German, Spanish, and Indonesian Peru Peruvian languages. Um, so it's in quite a bit of different uh, languages there. But this is a documentary about uh, Warner Herzog, the director, trying to uh, make a film. And I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself a copy, which I do think that this film should be in the Criterion Collection, which that's another story, but um, Fitzgeraldo. And uh, if you, these uh, two movies would make a fantastic double feature because uh, this is the movie and this is the making of the movie um, or the documentary of him trying to make this movie. And uh, honestly, the concept of this movie seems impossible. It seems like something that would, you know, never actually happen. Um, but this movie is honestly just a... Um, a, a fascinating look at a director trying to chase this dream of uh, like an impossible like 
mission of making this film. But to put it into some kind of context, it is about a uh, character who is trying to move this steamship, which is a 320 ton steamship, uh, through the jungle. And um, But he wants to move it to build an opera house in the middle of the jungle, basically. And um, what's wild about this is they, you know, the one scene, I mean, I guess it's more than just the one scene, but a large chunk of the movie calls for the steamship to be uh, moved up this mountain, basically, and down the other side um, and in the film they actually do that and this kind of this documentary um, kind of shows like how they did this um, unfortunately there was a lot of um, like things that went on behind the scenes too that were not necessarily great um, but it just sounds like a very terrible terrible time on filming this but this documentary is fantastic I really like as a filmmaker myself I feel like it was really like interesting to see a like the process of you know you know sometimes your your dreams are like bigger than what like is actually achievable um and yeah i, I highly recommend both this and the uh, the film heart of darkness by um uh, which is the the making of apocalypse now and both of those both of this one and the heart of darkness are like i'd say similar in just um you know, these crazy projects. And um, yeah, I would highly recommend checking this out if you are a, a fan of film and a fan of how movies are made. But that is the film Burden of Dreams. The next film I'm going to recommend, this is one that I watched not too long ago, and that is Spy Number 291 and the movie Heaven Can Wait. Now this is a film about a, uh, a character who uh, passes away and he is um, kind of put at the gates of hell and um, he's like, okay, I'm going to enter. This is kind of, you know, what my afterlife is going to be. And uh, the devil or the character that's playing Satan basically tells him um, that I don't think you're supposed to be here. Um, and this character is like, it, that doesn't make sense. I should be here. Uh, and so it's kind of like a recap of this character's whole life and, um, you know, this character doesn't necessarily think too highly of himself and so, uh, you know, you kind of get the sense of, like, he thinks that he's a bad person but in reality he was actually a pretty good person. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's just kind of an interesting, uh, like, twist on, like, that kind of story. Uh, but yeah, I'd highly recommend it. It's from 1943. It's 112 minutes and in English. So it's also in color, I should say. I should also add, there is a Blu-ray copy of this. I only have the uh, the DVD. Um, and so someday I'd like to eventually get the uh, the Blu-ray. But again, if this does sound interesting, I would highly recommend checking out on the uh, Criterion Collections website uh, the plot synopsis and maybe some screenshots and stuff. But that is the film Heaven Can Wait. This next movie actually semi-recently got put back into print, um, but that is Spy Number 409, um, directed by one of my favorite directors, Terrence Malick, which uh, I feel like his films are very, very, um, I don't know, like dreamlike as well. Uh, but that is the film Days of Heaven. Now this is from 1978, it's 94 minutes in color and in English. Uh, this movie might be one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. Uh, I, this is only the, uh, the Blu-ray, but it recently got a 4K upgrade in the uh, Criterion Collection, which I would absolutely love to get my hands on eventually and check it out. Um, and yeah, this is just a... Uh, there's so many beautiful, beautiful shots within this film, and I can guarantee if you, um, you know, watch some, like, compilations of, like, most beautiful shots in all of cinema, like, this movie will pop up because uh, it, it just has these wide open fields, and it is shot so, so nice, and uh, basically, from what I understand, there was, um, for several scenes, there was, like, they had to get the perfect lighting, and so they would wait uh, till a very specific time of the day, which is, like, golden hour to shoot, and they could only shoot for a very small amount of time but um yeah i think this might be my favorite terrence malick film uh and if you are a fan of terrence malick and you haven't seen this i would highly recommend checking it out uh but yeah it's the film days of heaven this next one uh is spy number 479 and it's one that i want to revisit very soon i feel like it's a movie that i think about fairly often um but that is the movie my dinner with andre it's from 1981, 111 minutes long, color and in English. Um, this is a, a movie that on the surface does not sound very fascinating at all. Uh, essentially, it is two characters sitting down and having dinner. Um, and there's really no cutaways. There's no 
like, you know, outside of that, that is pretty much it. The camera pretty much stays on them uh, eating dinner uh, and just having a conversation. And um, which to some people that might not sound very fascinating, but this might be one of the most um, engaged films I have watched where I could not take my eyes off the screen. Uh, the conversation was so like, um, just interesting and so there was so many different topics that they covered within it um and i just feel like it was a it's very interesting to see such such a a small concept like just two people having a conversation and something that's so well written um but yeah i don't want to say pretty much anything besides just the basic structure of the film but i would highly recommend checking this film out i feel like it is definitely worth your time um even if it doesn't sound very interesting to you i would um you know say just give it a shot because it is it's definitely has it's like the idea behind it seems a lot less interesting than the actual film if that makes sense um but yeah that is the film my dinner with andre and the last movie I'm going to recommend um, in this video, uh, this is spy number 895. Uh, it's from 2016. It's 88 minutes long in English and in color, and that is the film, or the documentary, uh, David Lynch, The Art Life. Uh, so now I am a huge, huge David Lynch fan. I absolutely love everything that he has made. I talk about this on my live streams fairly often, uh, just about uh, how I would love to, if Criterion came out with a David Lynch box set, uh, especially if they came out with a Twin Peaks box set, but uh, that's for another video. Um, David Lynch, The Art Life, which is a, a documentary on kind of his process as an artist um, and kind of his like, maybe like a, like a little bit of a, behind the scenes. It kind of peels back the curtain a little bit uh, to kind of see how he thinks and how he uh, works as a creator. And again, as a filmmaker, similar to Burden of Dreams, as a filmmaker, this is a very um, like inspiring film to watch. And uh, it kind of talks a little bit about his story and how he got into all of this. And um, yeah, it's very fascinating. And, uh, you know, if you're not a filmmaker, I feel like you could still like, you know, enjoy this. I feel like there's still things in there to enjoy. Uh, if you're a David Lynch fan, definitely things you could enjoy. Uh, but I specifically think filmmakers can really uh, enjoy this just to kind of see, um, you know, another artist and how they can, you know, kind of mold ideas into a creation. And um, yeah, this is another one that I think about pretty often and I need to uh, revisit it soon. I mean, only being 88 minutes, I feel like it's a pretty easy watch, but uh, that is the film, David Lynch, The Art to Life. So that's all of the films that I will recommend for this video. Uh, maybe in uh, November, I'll do another uh, recommendation list of things because uh, as my um, cinema journey also develops, I keep watching more and more films that um, you know I love and I'm discovering for the first time a lot of these. So, um, But let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my recommendations, if you have seen any of them, what are your thoughts on them? Uh, and what are some recommendations you would also give? Um, you know, I, I personally, I've not seen every Criterion film, and so uh, there is still a ton that I will uh, discover for the first time. I hope everybody out there is at least able to pick up a few things from the sale. Uh, I know I have, you know, I, I did a video already talking about a few things that I picked up, and uh, there'll be another video coming with uh, my last little bit from the uh, the sale. So um, I hope everybody out there enjoys uh, the, the rest of the Barnes & Noble sale. I know you know, as I said earlier in the video, it's going to end here in about 10 days or so, maybe less when this video gets posted. But um, yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.